Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you guys step by step how to make some beautiful frangipanis in Blender. So frangipanis are a flower, they usually grow in the tropics, even though I live in a Mediterranean climate they grow pretty beautifully here as well so I decided to make some myself. I hope you guys enjoy and I will be uploading this final result to my Patreon. So if you look at frangipani flowers on the internet, this is kind of what you see. They're a pretty simple shape and you can see they have five petals. So we've got to make sure we at least capture some of those details. So let's jump into a new scene in Blender. I'm going to be using Blender 4.0. And we're just select all the default objects and press delete. I think we're going to go shift A and let's go to our mesh options. And I think we're going to approach this probably with a circle. And then we're going to go into our edit mode. Inside of edit mode, we want to fill this with polygons. So we're going to go um, control F, obviously make every, sure everything is selected. You're going to go control F and you're going to go to grid fill. And let's go here to the grid fill option and then go to our top of graphic view by pressing seven on a number pad. And let's just take this offset and keep rotating it till these line up with the axis. So we have a straight line at 90 degrees and we have a straight line here at 90 degrees. We're then going to go S X in our top view. And let's get something that looks like this. And then let's grab these one, two, three, four, five verts at the bottom. Or you can just click and drag them like so. And let's go E to extrude and X. And let's extrude about down to here. S to scale and then go S, X, zero. And just flatten them. So we're going to go something like that. And then we're going to come over here, Control R. Click once and then just slide up. S, X, zero. And hit Enter. And let's go S and scale that probably about this much and then go control R, roll in a few loops here like so, double click. And now we have something that looks like this. Now we're gonna go and enable the mirror on the Y. Let's get our proportional editing and then let's grab this vertex here and go G. And let's just do some slight adjustment, something like this. And let's just maybe bring this in here just a little bit like this. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our front orthographic view. We're going to go A to select everything, R to rotate. We're going to rotate it probably, I'd say at about a 45 and then bring it over here like this. And then in our wireframes, we're going to go Z and go to wireframe. We're going to select these bottom verts here. Then we're going to go G with proportional editing is enabled. We go G and we're just going to roll our middle mouse button to increase the fall off we'll bring it about here and then just go R to rotate and then G just to bring it in and then rotate it again. So we're just kind of bending it like this and then let's go and select these inside verts and the inside like so. Let's go back into our front view and let's just go G with proportional editing kind of slide it and kind of just bow it a little bit like this kind of cupping the inside of the pedal. And before we go any further, let's tab back out. Let's go shift A, let's add in under our um, empties. Let's add in a cube. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and it's important by the way that this thing here, the thing we've been modeling with the plane that it's in the center of our world. So you can see our origin point is still in the middle, uh, even though we've moved it around in edit pose. As long as the um, origin point there is in the middle, we can array this circularly. So let's grab this empty. Um, let's actually go to our properties by pressing N and go to item. And let's go 360 divided by five, because we need five petals. I think that's going to be 72 on the Z. So 72, I hope I didn't get the math wrong on that. So let's go 72. Um, and then what we're going to do, we're going to grab our leaf here. We're going to go to our modifiers, add modifier and click on search. And let's type in array. Let's click on the array modifier. And because we're not setting um, arraying it along these axes. Let's set the default X value to zero. In fact, we could turn off relative offset and let's go to object offset, come to the drop down and click on the eyedropper and then select this empty. Essentially, it's just now going to take the position or rotation of this empty here and it's going to use that as a rotation point. So now let's grab the leaf again. Let's come over here and type in a value of five. And because this is rotated at 72 degrees, which can go into 360 degrees five times. This should work beautifully, okay? So now let's grab our leaf again, tab into edit mode. And we can see here with the frangipani reference that it kind of curls up and overlaps the next petal. 
So the way we're gonna do that is by simply coming in here, we still have proportional editing. I'm just gonna grab one vertex here on the side or two verts like this. Then go G, Z and just kind of, oh, we have to actually turn off the Y mirror. So make sure to turn off the Y mirror. Then go G, Z and kind of lift it up like that, kind of lapping it over. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the tip of the vertex here and you go R to rotate it. And just kind of rotate the whole thing just slightly like that with proportional editing enabled. And then you can come in here and just kind of cup it and adjust it towards the corner, just so it kind of overlaps like that. And bring it in more if you want here. Just kind of give it that nice leafy looking shape. Something like that should be fine. Tab back out and now what we can do is in our front view, in fact, let's just stay in edit mode. In our front view, um, we're not gonna bother to join these all together down here. We just wanna kind of move them just so they're at least not intersecting too much. So they're kind of almost touching each other like that. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna go turn off proportional editing. We're gonna press A to select everything and we're gonna go E to extrude and we're just gonna extrude out like so. Then we're gonna come in here and along this border in the inside, we're gonna go Control R Double click, we just added in a loop that goes all the way around. And while we have that loop active, we're gonna go Control E and we're gonna go Mark Seam. That's really important. Then we're gonna press A to select everything, go Alt N and just recalculate the outside to fix any normal issues potentially. And then let's go to our UV editing. And then with all of this active, let's go U and go Unwrap. And now you got these two paddles here. So I'm just gonna grab one over here by clicking on it, going Control L. Then go G to move it up. And let's just scale them both just a little bit. Now we have this ready to go. So make sure to save at this point so we don't lose our work. Okay, and now we're gonna go over to our texture paint. We're gonna go new and we're just gonna go okay. And then we're gonna go file, save as, and let's just save our texture. I'm just gonna call it flower and go save as. And then let's go to our materials tab. Let's go give this a material and call it flower. And let's come to the base color here and let's go to our envir image texture here. And let's click on the drop down and get that um, texture we created here, which isn't named, but we can give it a name. Let's just call it a UV in here. So UV texture, okay? There we go. So now we have that UV texture over here and you can see it's black because it's black over here. By the way, make sure you go Z and go uh, Material Preview. Okay, that's just gonna help you out in here. And then let's come over here to our Paint Tool and let's come here and make it, um, well actually it is already white, but I'm gonna make it a slightly off white. And then go F over here to grow the brush and I'm just gonna come and paint these two. In fact, just paint the whole thing white, honestly. Doesn't matter, let's just go over here and paint it all white, like so. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and change it to a nice bright yellow. And I'm not quite sure which one is the inside, so let's just test it out for a second. So find the one that is the inside. In this case, I got it. If you didn't get it, just undo it and get the other one. But we wanna go here to the inside and we just wanna go and paint this one yellow. And let's go up to about here, up to yellow, like that. Okay, that's looking good. And then let's go F to shrink the brush a bit and let's go and give this a nice kind of green, bring the value down a bit. And then let's just paint the outside like so. Until we have something that looks like this. And there we go, we've painted that. But you know, always check your references as you're working. But I think that looks pretty cool. So now I'm gonna make sure to go image, just save that image. Let's go back to our layout and let's go right click and go shade smooth. And now let's also go to our modifiers, go add modifier and go sub and get a subdivision surface. And there we go. So now we're gonna take these leaves, holding in shift, we're gonna select the empty. And let's go control P and go object, keep transform. And let's actually grab the leaves, tab into edit mode. And with all of them selected, or just the petals selected, let's go G, Z and move it in edit mode and move it up till the origin point here is at the bottom. So now if we grab this empty and we go R to rotate, you can see it all moves around that point like so, which is really cool. And by the way, it's very forgiving. You can still come in here at any point and make some adjustments should you want to, um, you know. Completely up to you how you wanna go about this, but I think that's looking good. So now what we're gonna do, is 
We're gonna make sure to save again. And now let's grab this flower and empty and go Shift D to duplicate and move it over to the side. And now we're gonna keep grabbing this over here and go Shift D and just move it over to the middle. And let's go R to rotate, like so. And while we still got it active, let's go Shift D, R to rotate and rotate it like so. Let's get our top view, Shift D, and let's go R to rotate. Shift D, R to rotate like so. And there we go. So just a little tester here. And you can just go around moving these empties to make sure none of them intersect. But just kind of make a nice little thing like this. And maybe let's just grab this one over here, bring it in. Just kind of tuck it in there. You can do as many or as little of these as you wish. But once you have it, let's go into our front view. Let's go Shift A, let's add in a camera. And let's go G, Z, move it back. And let's just go ahead to our render settings. Let's make it cycles. Let's make it GPU only if you have one. And I think about 55 samples should be fine for this. And then we're gonna go Shift A, let's add in a light. And it's gonna be an area light. I'm gonna move it over to the side, rotate it. And let's give this a strength of 3000 because the scene is really big. You could always scale the flowers down, but for now I'm just also gonna increase the size. Let's go Z, let's go rendered. And I might even bump that up to like 5,000. Like I said, it's because it's a really big scene, um, you need to add more samples, um, more power, because this is physically based. Um, because of the inverse square law. Obviously, you know, you have a bigger area, you're gonna need a more powerful light source to send enough photons in that area. Um, but, you know, won't get into that now. So let's go Shift D to duplicate this light. Bring it in over here. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna go to my renderer, go over to the lot film and just make it transparent because I'd like to add in my own background later on. But for now, I think that looks good. So let's go render and render the image. And there we have it guys. I hope you have enjoyed this. Keep in mind, um, this is just a very basic approach. The more you're gonna kind of um, texture paint it, add some more details, maybe some bump, some different reflections add a bit of subsurface um, scattering, but I think this is just a general idea of how to get some nice quick flowers. And I think they look pretty good. And if you were to composite these into a shot, um, you know, they would look pretty good in animation. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'll see you next time, and I will be uploading this to my Patreon.